If you've seen my videos before, you'll no doubt have also seen my Sony PSF9 battery powered turntable. Ever since I bought it a year ago, it's proved to be very useful. Unfortunately, they are rare and very expensive. A less technologically impressive but significantly cheaper alternative was the Audio Technica Soundberg that I reviewed a while back, but these are still not that easy to find and you wouldn't exactly call them cheap either. So today I'm looking at another alternative, a battery powered portable record player, the Columbia GP3. Now as long as you're prepared to import a second hand one from Japan, they are relatively plentiful and one that's in good condition can be found for between 150 and 200 pounds. This site that occasionally stocks used examples has a write up where they call it a legendary portable turntable from Columbia, Japan. It says it's built like a tank and has a cult following amongst diggers. It also mentions that they are often issued in special editions, and a special edition is exactly what I imported as new old stock from Japan. This is a Cornelius limited edition, and according to Discogs, Cornelius is a Japanese musician. The reason this particular variant of the GP3 appealed to me is because of the utter nonsense that's written all over the box. Apparently this is an invisible version of the portable player and one that is hilarious and blind with invisible mad flavour from Cornelius. Cornelius of course was one of the characters from Planet of the Apes which might explain the connection as to why this box has an ape on it. But it's not just any ape, it's Skeleton Ape. I kind of feel that that should say Skeleton Ape but hey, who knows? I mean, after all it's for ages three and a half not includes Tom Cruise. Yeah, on the back you can get your own cut out Skullinger mask, so I suppose that means that the skeleton ape is called Skullinger, or is it Cornelius the skeleton ape? It's really hard to make out what's deliberately nonsensical and what's accidental or a translation error. I mean, these are clearly jokes, there's a voucher to save 0% and it's also 0% water resistant, but I'm not sure what open air beautiful lounge means, and notice that skeleton is portable player is invisible. Oh, and the carton, it's made from 100% recycled pepper. You can see a real date on here though, which shows that this special edition dates from 1996. But you can also cut out and fill in your own fake identity card, and for some reason, on the side of the box, you can read facts about ABBA, John Travolta, and 007. Anyway, that's enough of that, let's get it out of the box and take a look at it. Now the first important thing to notice is that it has a monaural earphone jack, so that's intended for something like this. If you were to plug in a set of stereo headphones, the sound would only come out of one ear. Now that review stated that the mono output can be easily fixed with an adapter, however what they mean by that is that you can use something like this so that you can hear the sound from both earpieces, but of course it won't be in stereo, it's just dual mono, you'll be hearing the same thing in both ears. And that mono earphone socket is the only wired output on this turntable, so having no stereo output of any kind is a significant limitation. Anyway, moving on, the instructions are telling me not to do loads of things, yeah I'll definitely avoid those, but I'm pretty sure I can figure out how to use a record player without these instructions anyway. So starting off by removing the plastic lid, you can see we've got a bit of sponge inside here that holds down the tone arm when it's in place and there's also a clip that I'll show you the purpose of later. The player has two dials, the left one is the pitch control and the right one, well that's the on off switch as well as the volume for that single upward facing speaker. The speed control selector is on the left here and selects between 33 and a third and 45. Now note you can't get to that switch if a 12 inch record is already on the platter, so you have to select the speed before you put your record on. And it turns out that the slip mat that's on here is actually a flexi disc and the recording that's on here I believe was unique to this particular set. So if you wanted this record you also had to buy this record player. That's stuck down to the platter although it's quite possible you could peel it off with a bit of effort. Now if you flip it over we can see on the bottom we've got the speaker visible through the clear plastic case and it's 8 ohm 2 watt. And there are also three picture hook type holes on the back so this player can be hung on a wall in either a portrait or landscape orientation. Now it can be powered by either the mains or battery power, the power lead is stored inside this compartment on the back but since the device runs from 100 volts I'd need to run it through a step down power converter, I've got plenty of those in the house but for this demo I'm going to be running it from 6D cells instead. 
Now, that review earlier mentioned that this device was built like a tank. Well, that must be a plastic tank then, because, I mean, it's reasonably thick plastic, but the construction, to me, doesn't scream quality. It feels pretty cheap and creaky overall. But it's a relief to see that with those batteries installed, it is working, so that's good news. Let's first off start by having a listen to that special edition Cornelius Flexi Disc. <laughs> So that's what all the kids were into in 1996. Okay. I think I need to play something else, though, that sounds a lot less like someone taking a chainsaw to a music shop so I can tell if it really is working properly. And I've got to say, a warped flexi disc really doesn't make for the best slip mat. That speaker really isn't very good. It's very thin, tinny sounding, and... Pretty quiet, even on maximum volume. Any smartphone will be able to blow it away for richness and loudness, so let's try that earphone socket instead. You don't know what you do till you put on a pressure across the 110th street of a hell of a tester. Right, well that's a lot better. Of course the audio is just coming out of the left channel at the moment, so what I'll do, I'll try out that pitch control in this next section, but I've also duplicated the audio in editing so that it plays back through both channels. Right, fortunately I've also now managed to find my mono adapter, so let's plug that in and give that a go. You'll notice that the centre spindle is shaped unusually, and that's so that it holds the clip that was located inside the lid. It slides over the spindle and it holds the record in place. And this means that it can even play a record while it's hung on a wall. Now, if that gets you wondering how much tracking force is being applied, then you're not the only one. So let's find out. My stylus scales can measure up to 10 grams of force accurately because this is a five gram weight, and if I put that on the scales and tear it, when I take it off, it reads minus five grams, and putting it back on again reads as zero. So with five grams as my new zero point, resting the toad arm on the scale takes it up to 2.97. So that's approximately eight grams of tracking force, but it does vary slightly. It's a little bit over eight towards the center of the disc. The speed is a bit better though, it measures at 33.65 RPM, or 45.10, which is pretty accurate. The flutter comes out at around 0.9%, which is bearable. So if you look at this as a toy, a novelty turntable, an equivalent to say something from Fisher-Price then, it's what it is. It does what it sets out to do. It plays records. It's not hi-fi, and it doesn't really pretend to be. It's clearly built to a price. I mean, that speaker is very quiet and you can't get stereo out of it in any way, even though it does use a stereo stylus. So that's all fine. However, it doesn't, in my opinion, warrant the prices that are being asked for it. I mean, look at the bottom here. Yes, that's someone asking over a thousand pounds for two of these turntables plus a mixer unit. And that mixer unit could occasionally be found separately at a great expense too. But despite the ability to beat match using the pitch control on these decks, I really can't see a DJ wanting to use this setup when they could have got a couple of old SL1200s for that price. And unlike the Sony PSF9 and the Soundburger, the GP3 doesn't use a decent moving magnet cartridge, it's just a basic ceramic unit that holds a sapphire stylus located in a plastic mount, exactly the kind of thing that you get on one of these generic briefcase type turntables, although in my opinion, most people would probably be better off with one of those. It's most likely a load of rubbish, but it's just £40 worth of rubbish, and at least it's stereo rubbish at that. 
Now, if the GP3 really is a cult classic, then it's another reminder of why you should avoid cults. But I can't blame the GP3 for this cult classic status. Columbia just made a novelty plastic record player. It's not their fault if 20 years down the line some people started treating a toy as something more than that. It's just a reminder that just because something's old, it doesn't necessarily make it good. They made plenty of rubbish back in 1996 as well. But of course, that's just my personal opinion. As with everything, you should buy whatever makes you happy. However, for me, the best part about this one was the box it came in. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Now, whenever I do a video featuring a record player, it usually prompts quite a few people to suggest some other models for me to take a look at in the future. So I thought I'd better give a quick update on which ones I'm planning on looking at and which ones I'm not. The first definite no is the ELP laser turntable. That's the record player that reads records using a laser. It's been on the market in various guises since the mid 1980s, but the fact that no one else is making anything similar tells you a little bit about it. It doesn't really work all that well and it costs around $10,000. So there's almost no chance of appearing in a video so moving on next is the magnetic levitating turntable now this is something that I just couldn't be any less interested in I saw the crowdfunding campaign for it back in January but it didn't appeal to me it's a basic manual turntable it looks like it uses a tone arm from a project model but because the platter rides on magnets for some reason it costs a thousand dollars no definitely not my cup of tea that one but you can find other videos about it on YouTube however there are a few other crowdfunded turntables that I plan on making videos about if they ever turn up that is in early 2017 i ordered the love turntable which was due for release at the end of that year but of course i'm still waiting over a year and a half later and around the same time i also ordered the wheel by miniot which looked promising and had a similar anticipated delivery date but again still waiting and earlier this year i ordered the cosmo phone honestly i only bought this one because it just looked so awful but hey it might surprise me so if any of those three ever do turn up expect to see a video about them Here, what's the point of all this AMSR stuff then? You mean ASMR? Yeah, that's what I said, SMAR. I've watched three of these videos now, and I don't get it. What's it all about? Well, it's supposed to give you a tingly feeling. What, like when I wake up with a numb arm? No, people are supposed to enjoy it. Didn't you feel anything when you listened to it? You mean there's supposed to be sound on these videos? I thought they were all silent. No, that's the point. It's somebody whispering into your ears. Well, it's no good whispering at me with my hearing. They need to speak up. Oh, uh, um, hold on. That's given me a great idea for something new. What's that? ASMR for the hard of hearing. What? Exactly. Hold on a minute and I'll just get everything set up. Right, I'm going to talk into this microphone and you tell me if you feel any sensations. Okay, fire away. Right, right. I'm, talking I'm talking into, into your, your ears, ears and you and should you now should be now hearing. Be you need to speak up more. All oh, right. And the sound of my voice should be making you feel relaxed. Sit back and enjoy the tingly sensation. No, I'm getting nothing. Um, well, there's another thing I could try. These ASMR people sometimes use sound effects to relax people. I've got some queued up here, so have a listen to these. sensation now. What does it feel like? I think it might be a migraine. Can you smell burnt toast? <laughs> 